good bill and I recommend it to the House. I call the Honourable Member Sua William Seo. Thank you. Manu Sui Fua. Mr Speaker. I have not been a... I haven't sat through the public submissions on this bill on the Select Committee, um, but I have read through the reports, contrary to what that member might want to say, um, and I think there's some things that need to be clarified, contrary to what the previous member who just said. The Labour Party is supporting this bill. Let's be quite clear about that. And we're supporting it because it is about the Coal Creek Rural Water Supply Scheme that is vested in the Council being transferred into a company owned by the farmers who put up the money 50% uh, to establish the scheme in the first place. The other 50%, we should remind that side, was put up by taxpayers. And the scheme now, and I understand that there's been, this has been going on for quite some time, there's been some discussions on it, but the transfer of the scheme includes real and personal property of the Council, includes the intake structure, the treatment plant, the land on which the treatment plant is situated, the in-ground covered reservoir, two waste discharge ponds, the pipes and pressure reducing valves, other valves and supply point connections, all water meters for the scheme, the electronic control and monitoring equipment, but does not transfer water rights. And I think that needs to be on record. It also, uh, according to the course floor, is a minute to clarify that the Coal Creek Rural Water Supply Scheme, um, everything is sold as I outlined, except for the cross-linkage pipeline beyond the connection point used for the purpose of providing water to Upanake residents in certain emergencies. And I'm pleased to note also that in Clause 5, it's a minute to provide an opportunity for authorities representing iwi, whose rohe wholly or partly encompasses the scheme distribution area to be consulted. I think uh, it's quite sad, Mr Speaker, when you have a group of people who, for one reason or another, did not consult the local iwi of the area. And I'm pleased to note that that committee saw fit to include, to amend Clause 5, to include the consultation. Now, I think just because that clause is in there does not mean that I have confidence that they'll carry it out. And I think that's the point that we're saying. We're supporting the bill, but there are concerns that have been raised by the public, that are raised by the local iwis, that we've got to continue holding this government to account for. So my word, really, to this, to the Council, is the Council's got to be vigilant and make sure that the local areas aren't just consulted when they're needed, but there's ongoing engagement and ongoing discussion about issues before, uh, before conflict occurs. Uh, clause 8, uh, I'm pleased that where the company, if the property within the scheme's distribution zone were to be transferred or leased to another person, that the company assess its capability and commitment, including the supply of water, to Opanaki in emergencies. Finally, uh, I just want to raise this because uh, in a report by Richard Wood on the 27th of August 2009, entitled The Battle for Cold Creek Water, uh, the author makes reference to a regional medical officer who raised concerns about waterborne illnesses. I think that's the point that we're trying to make here, that whilst these, the scheme is being transferred, the Council still has a responsibility to ensure that quality water is provided and in the case of emergency that that water does not give rise to these particular illnesses. I raise that because, sir, uh, I would hate for anything to happen and if it did, we would blame, put the blame squarely on this Government. Thank you. I call you Zini Sage. Um, we'll take a short call on the South Taranaki District Council.